Well, Luis and I are plugging away at the retaining wall. We're kind of waiting on Jack. Always waiting on Jack. He's holding us up because we've got to set a nice big moss rock boulder here that we can tie our retaining wall into. So right now we're cutting in against this one. We've got this one dry stacked. We got three more courses to go. So we're gonna go ahead and at least button up this edge and then hopefully our rock delivery from only brick company shows up pretty and quick. And to be fair, they're not waiting on me. We just don't have the proper rock for that area. We want a certain size rock and we don't have that certain size rock. So don't blame me. No, we're still waiting on you. But anyway, as I was saying, once we get that rock, we'll get that set in. I can carve in these wall block into it. So everything's nice cut. Got that nice follow line going up through it. And then Luis and I can start putting this top patio back together, cantilevering over into the pond. Good morning, start of day three on this rec pond build. Jack, Luis, and Corey, we got Luis back today, feeling great. They're working on unloading all the Chilton flagstone for these cool steps that are going down through here into the pond. We're gonna pull this guy out because it's too big, find something that fits better. I'm gonna get going on starting on the base and the base course of the retaining wall. Jack and the guys are gonna keep plugging away, working on these stairs. We're gonna meet in the middle and then we're gonna continue rocking the pond. Luis is back today. How you feeling, buddy? Much better. Thank good, to you. good to have you back. I see uh, Corey and Jack are working on getting the flagstone unloaded. We're gonna get rocking and rolling. The morning of day three, firing on all cylinders. We got Corey, we got Luis, we got Jack and myself. Jack is working on these steps as I was just telling you about. Luis and I are working on this wall. Corey's doing an excellent job operating. Jack, talk to me about your vision, man. What what are you doing here? Stairs are gonna go right there. That's the vision. We have a genius amongst us people. So yesterday we had this first step coming into the pond or exiting the pond or however you want to say it at the bottom of the pond. You're not used to anybody else being a smart ass, are you? No, I'm not. It's got you all thrown off. Got him off his game, Luis. Yeah. So right now is we're trying to go up. So then the uh, the final so then the final stair going into the pond sits here in this area. And so I'm just trying to get some nice twists and turns into the stairs. It's just going to be a simple come down three or four steps and then you're going to come down to this step and then you're going to kind of twist to come down into the four foot section of the pond and so the process that we're going through is just kind of starting our base point here backfilling with gravel then setting our, our next step on top of that and making sure that's level and then keep going all the way up until we reach all the way to the top and as we're going we're trying to fill it in just so it kind of makes you twist and turn around the uh, around all the rocks and to follow you on the staircase well Luis and I are plugging away at the retaining wall we're kind of waiting on Jack always waiting on Jack he's holding us up because we've got to set a nice big moss rock boulder here that we can tie our retaining wall into so right now we're cutting in against this one we've got this one dry stacked we got three more courses to go so we're gonna go ahead and at least button up this edge and then hopefully our rock delivery from only brick company shows up pretty and quick to be fair they're not waiting on me we just don't have the proper rock for that area we want a certain size rock and we don't have that certain size rock so don't blame me no we're still waiting on you but anyway as i was saying once we get that rock we'll get that set in i can carve in these wall block into to it so everything's nice cut at that nice follow line going up through it and then Luis and I can start putting this top patio back together cantilevering over into the pond so in the meantime we'll just uh, do our thing waiting on the volunteer to do his thing I am 
super impressed with what these guys have done with these steps. They're very informal. Yes, they're not all the same, but that's what I like about it. I love that they're all kind of a little bit different. You can see that they're kind of doing this twisting, turning down through here. The next one's gonna actually come and step towards the camera. Then you twist and turn and there'll be a series of rocks kind of breaking up everything. And this brick wall in here is such a cool element to go straight down in the pond. It just looks awesome. Once that boulder's in right there, that brick will get cut into it. Looks absolutely incredible. And it's really setting the tone for the rest of the project as it comes in here. Really, really cool element. And great job by this team right here. Super impressed. Anyways, they're gonna continue that. We gotta get a rock delivery. So we've got gravel and that kind of stuff showing up, which would be perfect for you guys to backfill behind those steps. It just looks awesome. So lunchtime, Corey's already eating lunch, I think. Unlike everybody else, when I have ice cream, I still work. Wow. <laughs> that was that was deep. That was really deep, Jack. What I say? I gotta say. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Ice cream keeps the job moving. Best part of doing uh, install work is the treats. Key of any project. A little bit more. Make sure you note that down. The volunteer. I know, I'm back. Just can't get rid of them, folks. We got the wall done. 95% of the stair is done. We just gotta wait on one piece to that final piece in the top. But for the most part, we got this entire wall pretty much buttoned up for today. And it was nice because these two are the most time consuming because the wall just takes, I mean, look at all the cuts that Dan made inside to match up that wall to that rock. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> You know what that is, right? The extra 10%. That's right, baby. So we're in great shape. Chris was uh, blown away with our progress today. I just got off the phone with him. He said that he was super excited yeah. as you walk away from the camera. What? Volunteers. It was chilly this morning. Y'all were all in sweatshirts. Then we got that guy up there. Let's talk about the jets. We did something a little bit different than we have been doing this year. Yeah, so normally, if you guys have seen in all of our videos that we've installed jets, we've normally ran a two inch trunk line along our entire backside of our wall. And then we just stub from two inch to inch and a half line. And then all we do is just stub that into an inch and a half ball valve. And that's pretty much our jet. Well, with this, we did a Not little Not inch and a half, we go to inch. Inch, my bad. And as you can see, we have, we call this lock line. And you guys have probably seen those in aquariums where they have those little jets, or they call them power heads inside aquariums. And this allows us to fluctuate where we want that water to go. So in this case, we want this water to kind of shoot up against this wall and kind of turn back in towards the middle of the pond. So we have one sitting in this corner. We have one right here. We have another one. Hiding in there somewhere. Yeah, hiding somewhere. And then we have another one sitting right here. And this one's gonna do is kind of prevent. It's gonna any... massage your feet when you walk. Yes, in? it's gonna. It's a foot massager in the pond. So what this one's gonna it's like do walking is walking on clouds. Yeah, walking on clouds. <laughs> Uh, this one's just going to prevent any, al not algae, but any debris, like leaves or sediment from accumulating on top of these steps so they don't, so they're not slick when you're walking in, into the pond, at, into the four foot section. And we have one down right behind Dan with a pink tape on it. That one is to allow, it's the same difference that we have up here, is so no debris settles at the bottom. And when we're doing these jets and when you guys are putting in these jets in your own ponds, make sure that you guys have them facing towards where you're doing all the skimming at. So right there is going to be where our intake bay is at. And so we want to push all that water towards the intake bay. So right now we have that stream coming into the pond and then we have all these jets facing towards that intake base so that everything is getting drawn into the same space. So what about winter? Winter, that's another thing. These jets are gonna also provide a huge amount of space for a air pocket so then that gas, you have that gas exchange in the winter time. So they can come out here, they can, probably, they can probably see it from inside their house and they'll be able to see this big wide open spot of open water in the winter time when all the ice and snow is accumulating on top of the rest of the pond. What is the one key thing that Brian has dialed home for? 
for us on this lock line compared to what we normally do with our jets. We keep them short and why is that? So the, the lock line unfortunately is with us having a solid handling pump in here, it's gonna allow a little bit bigger of debris to get through the pump and into the line. It's gonna allow is for mulch or small pieces of leaves to get stuck on that lock line. Cause it's not like it's a smooth surface on the inside. As you can see, it's like kinda, it's, it's kinda ribbed. So it's gonna allow some small pieces of algae or some type of small aggregate to get stuck on this, the ribbed part. But with it being so small, it'll minimize the risk of it clogging. So and by keeping it short, it minimizes that. Exactly. It's easier it's to a take bit apart, more cling, a little bit more maintenance friendly versus making it two or three foot long. And then you're in here trying to figure out why your jets aren't working. At least with this, you could literally, all you gotta do is just dig down like two inches below the gravel and you're gonna be able to get to that T and pop that off and clean it if it ever clogs. Yes. Well, that's a wrap for day three. We'll see you guys on day four. We've already had our ice cream. It's beer 30 for the rest of us. Maybe ice cream 30 for him. Who knows? Maybe a juice box. Maybe mom's meatloaf. Mom makes killer brownies though. That being said, we'll see you.